Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. We'll be having simple conversations to help you improve your speaking and listening skills. No matter your level, you're welcome here. So, grab a snack, get comfy, and let's jump into the world of English together. Have you been watching the news lately? It seems like every other day there's a new climate change disaster. Absolutely. The wildfires in California are terrifying. And those extreme heat waves across Europe? It's insane. It really is. I mean, we've been talking about climate change for decades now, but it feels like things are escalating so rapidly. I know, right? It's like we're reaching a tipping point. I'm starting to get worried about the future generations. Me too. I've been reading about the potential consequences of rising sea levels. It's scary to think about coastal cities disappearing underwater. And the impact on agriculture? We could see food shortages on a global scale. It's a complex issue with far reaching implications. Definitely. I think it's crucial for governments to take drastic action. We need to invest heavily in renewable energy and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. I agree, but it's not just about governments. We as individuals need to make changes too. Things like reducing waste, conserving energy, and choosing sustainable transportation options. Absolutely. Small steps can make a big difference. And we need to educate people about climate change. The more aware people are, the more likely they are to take action. That's a great point. Education is key. We need to empower people with the knowledge to make informed choices. I'm hopeful that with increased awareness and global cooperation, we can find solutions to this crisis. Me too. It's going to be a long and challenging road, but we have to try. The future of our planet depends on it. You know, one of the biggest challenges we face is the economic aspect of transitioning to a green economy. Many people fear job losses in traditional industries. That's a valid concern. It's essential to create new green jobs while supporting workers in transitioning industries. It's a balancing act. Exactly. We need to invest in education and training programs to equip people with the skills needed for the green economy. And let's not forget about the potential economic benefits. Renewable energy industries can create numerous jobs. Absolutely. There's a huge opportunity for economic growth if we play our cards right. And we can't ignore the potential savings from reduced energy consumption. It's also important to address climate justice. The impacts of climate change are disproportionately affecting vulnerable communities. You're right. We need policies that prioritize these communities and help them build resilience. It's about equity and fairness. And let's not forget about international cooperation. Climate change is a global problem that requires global solutions. Definitely. Countries need to work together to reduce emissions and support developing nations in their transition to clean energy. I'm hopeful that with increased awareness, political will, and technological advancements, we can overcome these challenges and build a sustainable future. Me too. It's going to take time, but I believe we can create a world where humans and nature thrive. You know, it's fascinating to see how technology is evolving in response to climate change. Solar and wind power are becoming increasingly efficient, and battery technology is improving rapidly. Absolutely. The potential for renewable energy is immense. And it's not just about electricity. There's a lot of innovation happening in sustainable transportation, agriculture, and even carbon capture. It's exciting to see the possibilities. But I worry about the pace of change. We need to accelerate the transition to clean energy if we want to avoid the worst consequences of climate change. I agree. We need a combination of government policies, private investment, and public awareness to drive the necessary changes. And it's crucial to support developing countries in their transition. That's right. Climate justice is essential. We can't leave anyone behind. I'm curious about your thoughts on geoengineering. Some scientists are exploring options like solar radiation management or carbon dioxide removal. It's a complex issue. 
While it could potentially help mitigate climate change, there are also significant risks and uncertainties. I think it's important to focus on reducing emissions first and foremost. But I do think it's worth researching and developing these technologies as a potential backup plan. I agree. It's better to be prepared for all possibilities. Speaking of technology, I've been thinking about the role of artificial intelligence in addressing climate change. Could AI be a game changer in developing new clean technologies or optimizing energy consumption? Absolutely. AI has the potential to revolutionize how we tackle climate change. From predicting extreme weather events to optimizing energy grids, its applications are vast. It could also accelerate the development of new materials and processes for clean energy technologies. It's exciting to think about the possibilities, but there are also concerns about the energy consumption of AI itself. We need to ensure that AI is developed and used sustainably. That's a crucial point. We need to find ways to minimize the environmental impact of AI while maximizing its benefits. I wonder how the public perceives climate change and the urgency of addressing it. Are people becoming more aware of the issue, or are there still significant challenges in terms of public engagement? It's a mixed picture. There's definitely increased awareness, but there's also a lot of misinformation and apathy. We need to find effective ways to communicate the science and inspire people to take action. And it's important to focus on solutions and opportunities, rather than just the problems. People are more likely to engage if they feel there's hope for a better future. Exactly. We need to show people that a sustainable future is not only possible but also desirable. Shifting gears a bit, I've been thinking about the role of corporations in addressing climate change. While there's been progress, it feels like many companies are still prioritizing profits over sustainability. It's a complex issue. On one hand, corporations have the resources and influence to drive significant change. On the other, there's a pressure to deliver short-term financial results. Exactly. We need to find a way to align corporate interests with long-term sustainability. Incentives like carbon pricing and stricter regulations can help, but I think consumer pressure is also crucial. Absolutely. Consumers have more power than they realize. By choosing sustainable products and companies, we can send a strong message to the market. And it's not just about buying products. We can also engage with companies through social media and other channels to advocate for change. I think we're starting to see a shift in consumer behavior. More people are prioritizing sustainability in their purchasing decisions. It's encouraging to see, but we still have a long way to go. We need to make sustainable choices accessible and affordable for everyone. That's a key point. Sustainability shouldn't be a luxury. It needs to be integrated into our everyday lives. It's interesting how the conversation keeps circling back to the intersection of business and sustainability. I think it's crucial for companies to realize that being environmentally responsible can also be a competitive advantage. Absolutely. Consumers are increasingly looking for brands that align with their values. Companies that can demonstrate a strong commitment to sustainability can build customer loyalty and attract top talent. And let's not forget about the potential for innovation. Tackling climate change presents countless opportunities for new products, services, and business models. Exactly. It's a chance for companies to be at the forefront of a new economy. But it requires a long-term perspective and a willingness to take risks. I wonder how the financial industry is responding to the climate crisis. Are banks and investors starting to prioritize sustainable investments? There's definitely a growing interest in sustainable finance. More and more investors are looking for opportunities to invest in climate solutions. But there's still a lot of work to be done. It's essential to develop clear and consistent standards for sustainable investments to avoid greenwashing. Absolutely. Transparency and accountability are key. Investors need to be able to trust that their money is being used to make a positive impact. The role of governments in all this is undeniable. 
We've discussed businesses and individuals, but what about the policies and regulations that shape our world? Absolutely. Governments have a crucial role in creating a conducive environment for businesses and individuals to make sustainable choices. Strong climate policies, investments in clean energy infrastructure, and incentives for innovation are essential. And let's not forget about international cooperation. Climate change is a global challenge that requires a global response. We need to work together to set ambitious targets and share best practices. I agree. Multilateral agreements like the Paris Agreement are important steps, but we need to go further. There's a need for stronger commitments and increased accountability. It's also crucial to address the issue of climate justice. Developing countries are often disproportionately affected by climate change, even though they have contributed the least to the problem. That's a critical point. Developed countries have a responsibility to support developing countries in their efforts to adapt to climate change and transition to low-carbon economies. And we need to ensure that climate policies don't exacerbate existing inequalities. A just transition is essential. Absolutely. It's about creating a sustainable future for everyone, not just for a privileged few. I think we've covered a lot of ground. It's clear that addressing climate change is a complex challenge with no easy solutions. But it's also clear that there's a growing momentum for change. I'm optimistic about the future. With increased awareness, technological advancements, and political will, we can create a sustainable and resilient world. You know, one aspect we haven't touched on much is the psychological impact of climate change. It's easy to get caught up in the science and policy, but the emotional toll on individuals and communities is significant. That's a really important point. Climate anxiety is a growing concern. People are worried about the future, and the uncertainty can be overwhelming. And it's not just about anxiety. Climate change can lead to displacement, loss of livelihoods, and trauma. We need to prioritize mental health support for affected communities. Absolutely. We also need to find ways to build resilience and hope. Communities need to be empowered to adapt and thrive in the face of climate challenges. It's interesting how interconnected everything is. Our physical and mental well-being are deeply intertwined with the health of the planet. It's a reminder that addressing climate change is not just about the environment. It's about creating a better future for all of us. I think we've covered a lot of ground today. It's been a really insightful conversation. Me too. It's clear that addressing climate change requires a multifaceted approach involving individuals, businesses, governments, and the global community. And it's a journey that will require ongoing adaptation and learning. But I'm hopeful that with collective effort, we can build a sustainable and resilient future. I share your optimism. It's time to turn words into action. Absolutely, the psychological dimension of climate change is crucial. It's easy to get lost in the data and the policies, but the human element is at the heart of it all. And it's a two-way street. Our emotional responses to climate change can also influence our actions. Fear and despair can be paralyzing, while hope and optimism can be incredibly motivating. Exactly. It's important to find a balance between acknowledging the seriousness of the situation and maintaining a sense of hope and agency. I think that's where education and communication come in. We need to empower people with knowledge and tools to take action, while also providing support for those struggling with climate anxiety. And it's essential to highlight the positive changes happening around the world. Sharing stories of success and innovation can inspire others to get involved. Definitely. We need to focus on solutions and opportunities rather than dwelling on the problems. I wonder how we can effectively communicate the urgency of climate change without causing unnecessary panic or despair. That's a tough one. It's important to be honest about the challenges we face, but we also need to offer hope and a path forward. Perhaps focusing on personal actions and community based solutions can help people feel more empowered. I think you're right. People are more likely to engage if they feel like they can make a difference. 
And let's not forget the importance of building resilience. Helping communities adapt to the changing climate can also improve mental health and well-being. Absolutely. It's about creating a future where people can thrive, even in the face of climate challenges. Absolutely. Let's dive into the crucial role of education in combating climate change. It's the foundation for building a climate-conscious society. I agree. Education is key to empowering individuals with the knowledge and skills to understand the complexities of climate change and take informed actions. It's about fostering critical thinking and problem-solving abilities. Exactly. We need to start early, integrating climate change education into school curricula from a young age. This will help cultivate a generation of climate-conscious citizens. And it's not just about science and environmental studies. Climate change is a multifaceted issue that intersects with economics, politics, and social justice. A holistic approach to education is essential. I think you're right. We need to foster interdisciplinary learning and collaboration. This will help students understand the interconnectedness of different systems and develop innovative solutions. And let's not forget the importance of practical skills. Education should equip students with the tools to implement sustainable practices in their daily lives and communities.